Uh, we've achieved. Uh, we've received apologies from uh, Pat, Melissa, Jim, and Matthew O'Toole. Uh, everybody else here is present. Thank you very much indeed. I just remind members to declare any relevant financial or other interests at each committee meeting as applicable. That would be you, Jim. I think it would be. Probably. Yeah. Yep. Where are that? In respect to the bill. Uh, we move on to the draft minutes of the proceedings of 18th of March 2020. The uh, draft minutes of the meeting are on page, are at page five. Uh, members, are we content that the draft minutes are an accurate recording of proceedings? Yeah, great. All the says aye. Uh, agreed. Uh, those minutes may be published on the website, Jim. There are no matters arising. Uh, next item on the agenda is written evidence, uh, Department of Finance Public Spending Directives, Budget 2020-21. Sorry, Chair, uh, matters arising. Yeah. Uh, there's. Uh... I've gone on the wrong brief. Apologies, Tim. All oh, right, sorry. Uh, there was a matter arising. Uh, that the committee asked the department to provide in time for this meeting any minutes or meetings relating to the department's role in RHI tariffs as led out in the regional rates, energy number two act, and details on the involvement and interaction with the NIO. Uh, informed members of the department is content to provide the minutes, but has informed the committee office that unfortunately this information is delayed due to pressure at present within that directorate. Uh, I'm just asking your agreement where members are content to defer until the next meeting and for the clerk to forward the response to members once it has been received. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, can I just say this, because this is something that has annoyed me, aggrieved me um, over the last number of weeks, uh, and I'm, I'm really worried about this. Under, normal, under the circumstance we're under, absolutely no question uh, that we should defer this and pick it up at a different time and give the Department space and time to work on the emergency. So I'm not even wanting them to do something now on it, uh, but we will need to pick this up because ultimately we asked for the minutes. Mm -hmm. The very first day, we asked for the minutes, and they produced this timeline, which none of us, I don't think, were happy with. It's not sufficient. If we were normal peacetime, if you like, we should be going through the department on this issue, on, on this issue alone. So I do feel that we need to be mindful of that and pick it up when we can at an appropriate time in the future. But if there's minutes there, in the ether somewhere, and they didn't divulge them at the first time of asking. Yeah, why not? Something really wrong after what we've been through with regards to the RHA inquiry. Yeah, just Jim, and then sort of Jim. Yeah, I just want to say last week I raised, they sent a document which was all mixed up, or yeah. at least the numbering was. Yeah. Has that been corrected? Or? There isn't a corrected version of that yet, no. Um, sorry, Jim. Go ahead. If the, uh, Speaking to the data, the data had hoped to have that in time for the meeting. She has said that it might come through if it's cleared later on. So it is there. So it, it'll, you know, it, it'll be with the minutes at least will be there, uh, possibly during the meeting. And I'd, if they come in, I'd forward them to members. Just, um, just on the sort of Jim's point, and also discussions with the data. Um, look, this is we've been raising this for some time, and I would feel happier if we have committee as a note of record went back to the department and said, yes, we understand that the DALO is, uh, is producing it, but we fully expect to see it and to be circulated to, to members. Uh, and I appreciate all the sort of the pressures that everybody's been under, but this has been going on for some time. And I think, look, there's normal business, but there's also governance issue here. And I would like uh, the committee's approval for us just to write there to make that as a note. All is Great. happy. Great. And again, it's not even the content of what we're asking for, it's the principle. So if there's been minutes there and they haven't divulged them, do we have to keep asking for the unknown? Do we have to keep asking what isn't what hasn't been disclosed? Yeah. This should be a matter of fact now. Yeah. Indeed. Really worrying. Great. I'm very content about that. You happy with that, Jim? Okay. Uh, if we're happy to move on then to the written evidence of the Department of Spending Directive Budget 2021 process. I want to draw members' attention to the Northern Ireland Research Briefing Paper and Statutory Template Standardised Scrutiny Approach pages 15 to 31. Uh, the clerk's memo to the statutory committee on the 2nd of March 2020, highlighting the work intended to be undertaken by the budget process, page 32. Uh, the clerk's briefing paper and further allocations to budget 2020-21, uh, page 33. A written statement from the Minister of Finance on the 2019-20 public expenditure further allocations, page 34. The department's timing of budget debate and vote, page 38. 
and written evidence from Esmond Burney to the House of Commons Northern Ireland Affairs Committee regarding a new decade, new approach agreed, agreement on page 39. And the links uh, in the papers have been extracted for convenience or tabled at page, 19, four, uh, page 9 to 14. Chair, can I ask a question about the, um, the template that I think research drafted maybe for circulating to other committees? Mm -hmm. um, page 25 of the pack. 1, 2, C, non-block allocations. What on earth are non-block allocations? Mm. It's not a phrase I'm aware of in public finance. What is that? Um, that's a good question, and it's a uh, phraseology I'm not aware of either. Follow that up with this, Chair. Yeah. Because if we're sending this out to other committees with terminology that we don't understand... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is it it's meant to be Kai? I don't know what it's meant to be. Um. So, um, Chair, to, to ask Ray, what do non-block allocations refer to? Yes, what are we talking about? And uh, will departments be will will the will departments understand that terminology? Yeah, yeah. Sarah, on this issue too, uh, and again, time moves so quickly, and we're in the middle of emergency. But it's, uh, at the Justice Committee, when this came up, it sort of was. Uh, well, it nearly, it's nearly feels as if there need, needs to be a page inserted around the coronavirus. I think that the next budget process will have to be a coronavirus budget. Yeah. Uh, so there may well be some working need done with regards to how we flesh out with the other committees what departments are doing uh, regarding the, the emergency. I, I suspect there's going to have to be a lot of money drawn into the centre mm -hmm. in, order, in order to be focused on the emergency. So again, how that will play out and how the committees will be able to scrutinise that playing out, I think is a, que a fair question that we should now be asking. It's probably not covered in this performer because uh, it, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a performer for standard procedures. I think um, I would circle ahead, Chair. Chair, the... Uh, uh, Raised, we're working on this until uh, Friday afternoon, and it's the, the latest updated one. So, at page 27, members will see responses to this section include those pressures relating to, for example, a resource dead, EU exit, new decade, new approach, or COVID 19. See ya. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And Jim. then again, on page 29, there's a reference to COVID 19 as well. Chair, can I ask the clerk, uh, page 33, which I think is his note? Um, there's a table there, paragraph two. Mm -hmm. Where are those figures coming from? Are those? Uh, those like are the estimate. You know, the resource figure is much more than eleven and a half billion. Something like eighteen billion. Those are the figures that are, are in the, the 2020 to 2021 budget, uh, I think, in the, in the Minister's statement. It was the Dell figure. Oh. But, like, resource is much more than that, isn't it? That's... Uh, is, is that the... the the budget figure. No, no, that has to be. I can check that for. Mm. Just when I read that, it, it jarred that it didn't seem what I was expecting to read there. Okay. Yeah, that's on, page, that's on the page, second, or the first page of Conor Murphy's Minister's Statement, mm. 16th yeah. of March. Yeah. Okay. Or routine Dell allocations? Well, the routine Dell allocations are different from uh, our resource figures. Yeah, yeah. I think they probably are the Dell figures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? Do we know yet? Uh, has the executive approved the budget? No. 
No. no. And obviously, with what's going on, um, I would doubt. And I think, as uh, the deputy's spoken, I think we're looking at uh, we might even be looking anew the whole budgetary process. Yeah, but he still has to make they something next Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. But it may be with provisions, and I imagine there'll be a considerable number of provisions in it. I don't think so. But we'll we'll see. There were, my understanding, Chair, is that the budget will have been agreed by the executive prior to coming to the House on Tuesday. So I don't. Know. Well, it's supposed. I think it's tabled for Monday. So okay. we'll okay. we'll see when it comes to. Um, I just want to draw your attention to the work that uh, Esmond Burney's done yeah. and the House of Commons Northern Ireland Affairs <laughs> Committee, and that's on your page uh, 39. But actually, if we go to page 44. And he's raised some quite interesting questions and their observations about the overall figures based around new decade, new approach. Mm. And if you could turn to page 44 and have a quick look at those bullet points, um, like any of your comments you have on it, because it might be an opportunity for our staff raised to do some more research on that and ask some sort of questions, because some of them are quite pertinent. Third point is quite a poignant one. Mm -hmm. I think the fifth bullet point goes without saying, Jim. No doubt mm -hmm. you would have mentioned that one. I think. <laughs> I think it might be the seventh bullet point where it talks about efficiency of spend mm. and referring the Northern Ireland Audit Office report recently reported on the weak record in terms of major public procurement projects. I mean, for me, for one of the biggest issues that we have is we can't even effectively spend the money we've got. Yep. Even looking at bringing in more resource and how we even manage to effectively do that without substantial reform. How we run this, uh, run the, the government? Yeah, I agree, Chair. That, that's why I wouldn't even consider any more fiscal powers at this present time because we just can't use them adequately. Um, so, uh, looking through all those points, uh, I, I think they're all, all good fair points. Enough. Yeah, yeah I, I think that they probably all go in batch. Uh, they could all go in batch to the raise team to explore further. Uh, the Deputy Chair has made a proposal which I would echo to take those points and ask them to raise to do some further work on those. Would the committee be content on that? Agreed. Thanks, Sean. Agreed. Okay. Uh, if we move on to uh, the next item on the agenda, uh, sorry, I'll seek agreement to forward the. Oh, sorry. Advise members, any question members have in relation to the paper will be recorded by the clerk and sent to the department for written response. Mr yes, Chair, that's the, 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 um, the, the, the uh, speaking notes that have been tabled. Yeah. Just to give you an opportunity to read those and see if there's any issues you want to take on. Jim, sorry, Clark, when they would get a response from the department, can we have those circulated to as early as possible rather than waiting for when the, the next meeting is the next meeting is due? Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm getting confused, but page seven of the table of papers. New decade, new approach. The financial package that accompanied the document provided for 483 resource and 40 capital. The minister talked a few times about 760 
What was... As extra money. Mm -hmm. That seems to be reducing it again. Am I right about that? 760 or 740 was the degree. Yes, sir, I think my recollection yeah. is something like that, that there was 1 billion minus uh, 240. Minus yeah, one. I think that's right. But here it seems to be presented as half a billion, really. And then it talks about 350 of that is for one off costs, one off budget pressures. Mm -hmm. And what are the four million for NI Pacific issues, I wonder? Could be all used up. Hmm? It could be all used up soon. I think it's all going to be used could up. Be a minus, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the agenda for pay, a change pay, is that the money for to pay the the settlements, the nurses, etc. Uh, no, I think the agenda no. for change is public service workers because I think the nurses is separate. Mm. But I would have to take would have to take I'd have to take advice on that. Who is the mo nurses' money not in this? That's in the. I think that's in the health figure. Are they part of the three fifty one off budget pressures? Maybe. Um, I would have to check, and I think we would have to check, but I think the 351 off budget pressures it was split between the nurses pay award and additional monies, I think, was going forward to, um, uh, was it to uh, education. So I think, that's the, I think that's the way it was split. But we would need to check on that, and I don't want to go into further detail on that until I've had a, I had a good chance to squeeze over it. Well, maybe we've got to ask for carpet creation to where the 760 went to as opposed to what's here. And sure, I have each of those others. Uh, you take that as Three points. Uh, what was 7.6 billion is now 483 million plus 40 million. Mm -hmm. uh, and to clarify that, what is the 4 million for in relation to NI specific issues mm -hmm. and an agenda for change pay? What is included in this and where is health workers' pay represented? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just want to know. Ladies and gentlemen, are we content? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to seek your agreement to forward the uh, templates to the Department's Finance Division requesting a return date of 15th April for committee consideration on the 22nd of April. Any reason? Sorry? What are we doing? They uh, forward the templates to the Department's Finance Division. Requesting a return date of the 15th of April for committee consideration on the 22nd. Is that the template yeah. I was talking about earlier? That's right, Chair. Is that the template that would be all, all finance divisions yeah. we get it, including yeah. the Department yeah. of Finance? Okay. And also seek agreement for the committee office staff to forward the completed templates to raise in order to inform the completed response from this committee. Are we content? Great. And um, I thought Esmond Burney's paper was um, quite useful. I would like us to have approval to circulate it to other statutory committees to inform their budget scrutiny. Are we content? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Department of Solicitor Officers Overview and Priorities. Uh, Clark's briefing paper in the Department of Solicitor's Office on page 49. And their overview on pages 50 to 53. Do we have any commentary?
I'm just watching to see Did they Jim's tell us anywhere what the total staff complement is? Uh, no, I haven't seen that. If, if the committee wishes, they, uh, we can schedule a, an or 11 session for a future date. To well, I'm not sure we need that, but it's just like that. I, I, I need to recollect, and, and Jim, we may sort of check the record, but I think we were given figures for the staff within the Department of Finance, and it was broken down into various subsections of departments. I think we probably, if we check we'll the minutes that. We, check that or on the paper, I think that we that probably already have that information. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. I move on to the next item on the agenda, uh, the SL1, the Pension Increase Review Order 2020. Uh, the making of this legislation fulfils the Department of Finance's obligation to provide by order for an increase in the rates of Northern Ireland public service pensions and payment and deferred pensions of 1.7% from effect 6th of April 2020. The order must be laid in the Assembly, but is not subject to further Assembly resolution procedure. This is the committee's opportunity to consider the policy set out in the SL1, as it is not possible to amend this once the rule has been made and led in this, has been made and is led in the Assembly Business Office. Uh, the clerk's business, uh, the clerk's briefing paper is at page 55, and the pensions review order is on page 56. We're content. Yeah. All those in favour say agree. Yeah. Agree. And the members agree so that the Committee of Finance has considered Department of Finance's proposal for subordinate legislation, the Pensions Increase Review Order 2020, and has no objection to the policy implications of the proposed legislation at this stage. Thank you. Move on to the next item on the agenda, number seven, private members' legislation, the functioning of government miscellaneous provisions bill. I want to draw attention to the clerk's briefing paper on the timeline and evidence for the functioning of government, page 60. I draw your attention to the updated provisional timetable for the functioning of government bill, which has been tabled at page 17 in the additional papers. Let me bring that up. Uh, I want to advise members at the meeting of the 22nd of April the committee will have to agree a motion to extend the committee stage of the bill. I also advise members that this provisional timetable is based on normal circumstances, which unfortunately we're not in, and doesn't take into consideration additional time which the committee may, may require as a result of the restrictions imposed on the current COVID-19 crisis. Jim, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm rather dismayed that from second stage to consideration stage, there is an expense of seven months. Now, granted, two of those are recess, um, but even that seems to me to be very protracted. So uh, I would be anxious to move it quicker than that if it can be done now. Oh, that's without prejudice, whatever coronavirus throws up, that can throw everything. Um, but this timetable, I presume, is compiled without regard to coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So to say that in normal circumstances we would see seven months pass from one stage to the next seems to me excessive. I do understand understanding orders. You have to make an application before the first 30 days expires mm -hmm. to extend. And it looks like understanding orders you can only make one such application. Mm -hmm. Which would be the idea of making it as long as possible? Uh, the danger of making it look as long as possible is that then other committees, etc., think, well, no rush here. Uh, certainly, whatever application is made by you, Chair, uh, I would hope that it would be in terms that you're setting a very long target, a long end date, but with a target to do it much sooner. I mean, my view is that. I agree if we were in normal circumstances, I would not be seeking this extension. 
and I don't think we as a committee should be seeking this extension either, apart from sort of the normal course of business. But to me, is particularly when we're sort of taking evidence and being able to get the right sort of evidence that's coming towards us, and we're able to do that. I think in the current circumstances, I think to make sure that we give the bill as fair wind as possible and enable people to contribute to as much as possible, given the sort of the time scale. I think it's important that we give it every opportunity that we have, Jim. I think it's a, I think it's a very important piece of legislation. So in that case, that is why I would be bearing in mind, nobody can see what's going to happen with COVID, but I can be fairly sure that we're not going to get back to normal routine business until the autumn at the earliest, I would suspect, maybe even longer. But that's a, that takes us into a different category if we're looking much beyond um, the early autumn. So that's what I would be looking to make in the application if, if the committee and if you're, Jim, you're content, given, well, the, given, given the caveats. Uh, like who knows how we're going to be operating, uh, but presumably for something like this, you could take evidence by video link. You wouldn't have to physically have the uh, attendees actually here. I'm thinking more about if we're uh, one of the things that we're trying to do in the assembly itself, and sort of the committee chairs were discussing this yesterday. The fact that we can, if we get any more than five members, we either have to use the uh, Senate chamber or the Assembly itself, <coughs> which means it's going to be limit the opportunities. Uh, and I'll, I'll say this right up front, as a chair of a committee, and I think one of the most important committees in the Assembly, I want to make sure that this committee continues to run and we still need to do our role. But it may mean we're going to reduce the, uh, the, the, the number of occasions we're able to do it. The number of physically occasions we're going to be able to do it within the um, in the building itself, and also the pressure that puts on the sort of resources to try and achieve that. I think the other question is when we when we look at the people we want to come and give evidence to us, are they going to be able to do it? Bearing in mind the other circumstances that are ongoing, would it be easier for us to say, look, we're going for the delay and then look to it in the autumn? Taking into the fact that you know the main items of business to try to keep Northern Ireland running is going to be how we deal with the COVID-19 crisis over the next three, four, five well, months. But this timeline is without regard to coronavirus, mm -hmm. and even this time timeline is saying seven months. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus starts disturbing us. We're looking at a lot longer than that. Uh, I'm I'm making the point that I, I think seven months is excessive. I'm not sure there'll be, yeah, we'll have to write out all sorts and sundry of people, but obviously we, we're asking them all for a written submission if they're interested, mm -hmm. and then we sift those and decide who we'd like to hear from, presumably. So it doesn't mean there's going to be an endless queue of witnesses. How many witnesses do you think we're likely to...? Well, I don't know. It, it depends what submissions you get back. You know, if you get submissions that don't really say I, I agree or I disagree or whatever, you may decide, well, we have it in writing, we don't need to hear from them. But if you get somebody who's making a, um, a strong argument one way or other, you might say, right, let's hear from them. Thoughts on the rest of the committee? Yeah, and, and it might be the case that uh, even if we need to clarify something, we do it in writing further, mm -hmm. or, you know, further writing rather than getting them in front of the committee, depending on how safe it is at any given time. On the timeline, I would agree with Jim. If this was my bill, I would be aggrieved too. Mm. Uh, with the current timeline, I suspect this is real. This should be realistic. <sighs> with all the uncertainty, uh, it should not be something that we should be looking at in normal circumstances. This timeline, to me, is just too extended. But uh, especially when we are a legislator, uh, I'm very keen that this place keeps going as a legislator. I think it's very important to the people. Uh, I think we, you're quite right, Chair. We should be strategic in when we meet and how mm -hmm. we meet, and making sure that when we do meet, <coughs> it's efficient mm -hmm. and, and for the purpose. Uh, but th there'll be, there may well be things here we can advance up the up the timeline rather than pushing them further away. You know, I agree with Jim. You know, is there anything to stop the committee? Uh, writing sooner um, and then just uh, seeing what we get back. Um, there'll be things there that may not necessarily cause a, 
a risk to safety that we could push out? There could be an issue as to the outside world. What are they really concentrating on? Hmm. That's an issue, whether they'll be able to sufficient. But, but if, we're, if we're selecting individuals to write to and we're asking them if they want to make a written submission, mm -hmm. like that can largely be done with or without coronavirus impact, mm -hmm. because it's, nobody has to come here. Yeah. So you simply set a deadline, which is, what, 30, 40 days out, and say, let's see what you want to say about this, if anything. And then when you see what they've said, then we can assess who do we need to hear from. Jim? Sorry, Chair, uh, just to explain how, how I've come up with this timeline. The uh, members will see there on the 22nd of April, the committee considers assembly research and additional evidence. So that will be the first opportunity for the committee to consider that research report. Uh, that research report may uh, provide opportunities for additional written evidence that the committee has not considered. Then time is required for those people to respond. Yeah. So built into that then is a closing date for additional written submissions of the 22nd of May. Following that, the committee will need to decide if it wants to take oral evidence from those people. Uh, that is why the final date for oral evidence is the 17th of June. Now, I'm not sure that that can be moved unless the committee is content to say we'll, we'll just take written evidence after that. But I've put that in there because, with the best will in the world, the committee won't know what it's going to get back. Yeah. Now, with yeah. that final oral evidence session, if there are amendments to be considered, there are only two weeks that are allowed for the committee to consider evidence, which you may consider to be quite tight in itself. And the week after that, a summer recess starts. Mm -hmm. Which might be so, And just a week to consider a preliminary view of the bill for the committee office to get that done between the, the Wednesday and getting packs out on the Friday before research would be impossible. But is the 8th of May, which is the closing date for written submissions, why does that have to be so far in advance? Uh, because the public notice won't go out until today, 25th of March, and that's allowed sufficient time with Easter recess built into that. But d for does it say anywhere what time is required for that? I think n normally for, for a consultation days, it? it would be six weeks, but uh, this I think is considerably less than that. But it also uh, it also builds in uh, or takes account of, of Easter. You know, I, I in developing in developing this recommended timetable, I've tried to, to bring it as close together as I can, and, and members will see that then once recess is over. Each week in, in that is required. Mm -hmm. if, if members are content that, first of all, they'll need fewer ev evidence sessions and also that no evidence sessions will be needed after the raised report comes out. I, I'm then sort of, a, a just couple to, of weeks could just to cut across you, Jim. I, look, until we see what raised comes out with, I mean, this is a substantial piece of legislation yeah. and it's going to be fundamental to the good governance of Northern Ireland as we go forward. And you know, I think we need I I would be surprised if we were doing this alone on written evidence. I believe we will be calling people. And I I, I would imagine um, because of the sort of the importance of the legislation we would be doing to that. So Sean? Just a uh, point I know members around the table argue for scrutiny and plenty of times of scrutiny. I think we do need to look at it. It is a major piece of work and as much scrutiny and as many evidence sessions as possible. Yeah, and, and, and I, you know, I think it's a very important piece of legislation, but it needs to be right. Yeah. Jim. To be honest, my head is not here right now, and mm. um, this legislation is the least of my worries right now, as was the same with the whole the population of this island. So, look at. Take the written evidence and then see who we're going to invite in, and just it, just to get, to get the delay or whatever uh, until October because this isn't nobody's priority right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Jim, don't take it personally, but that's just where we're at. Can I ask a question? So, looking at this timeline, oral evidence starts on Wednesday, the 13th of May. 
Mm. And how many weeks are we given for that oral evidence then? I think that's um, six weeks, so 12 evidence sessions. And of course, with the best one in the world, there would be other priorities for the committee within that time as well. Okay. But there mightn't be a demand for 12 evidence sessions. There, of course, there may not. And, I, I, and probably just not where it could 12, be, even just where it one could evidence be session up. per week would be six. Yeah, so, so that's where we can basically squeeze this up. Yeah. Uh, so, so that uh, for every one less evidence session we have, this pushes the timeline up, isn't that? Basically? Only that this is the problem that, that the raised paper won't be considered until the twenty second of April. If the if the members then decide to get a written evidence as a result of that, and then oral evidence as a result of that. So we're asking for the written evidence before that. We're asking for it now. Yes, however, when the raised paper comes in, there may be additional witnesses or evidence identified in the raised paper that the committee may want to get. Mm. And this timeline allows for that. And is it normal to always have a raised paper? It usually is, but I think what, what would generally happen is that that would be done uh, possibly during first stage whenever a committee knows that the bill is going to be referred to it. However, in this case, because we didn't know which committee the bill was going to be referred to, mm -hmm. uh, that but could the, be the library service did produce the paper on this bill. Yeah, however, I, d I don't think there was any consideration given to potential witnesses no. or no. Uh, identifying any evidence. That no, but it has speak. produced the paper. And there, there has been a raised paper commissioned from this committee, which is due to be considered by the committee on the 22nd of April. And that can't be done any sooner? No, no Chair, uh, Reyes has been quite busy and I have informed me that that's as soon as they can get that to the committee. So I think, j just to um, move us on here, um, the question is whether we go for the extension or not. And bearing in mind the circumstances, I think we are. I think that's the most prudent course of action. Yeah. Right. I, I, I'm not disagreeing at all. We go for an extension. Yeah. Um, I just think an extension to the end of October is not much. But um, in view of the fact that I think we should be looking for an extension, and we don't know the length of time it's likely to be. And noting your our views, Jim, but also taking into the views of the rest of the committee. I think we seek go for the uh, extension, and we were looking towards the end of the year, weren't we, Jim? The end of October. End of October, sorry. Well, the, sorry, the end the end of, of October would be on norm, under normal circumstances. Yeah. Mm. And uh, you know, the, the committee. Now, having said that, the committee secretariat will obviously work to get this expedited as quickly as possible. Yeah. I'm, However, yeah. the committee member may wish to consider whether it needs to include a contingency. In there, so under nor normal circumstances, I would be recommending the end of October. So, so, so we can set a date for whatever time, but really, the destiny is in our own hands. As to Correct. What we do. So, but basically, the longer we we the yeah, longer yeah. we set it out, the easier it gives us more flexibility. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way that's the way I would look for it. So, yeah. Yeah. looking at probably December. Sure, I, that that would work. and you know it, that would certainly be be enough. However, so where's December come from? It's, it's to give us more time, flexibility, in case in case something really bad happens here. If yeah. something really bad happens, it's quite clear that standing orders in this house will be set aside left, right, and centre. And the standing order we're concerned about is standing order 33, which says you must make the application within 30 days of the bill coming to the committee to extend. So I guess something really bad happens. Standing orders are going to be the least to your worries. Mm. I don't honestly see if we're being produced with a timetable, which I think is far too long anyhow, which runs to the 20th of October, why we would be contemplating an extension beyond the 20th of October. I, my view is, is that we need to give this bill the maximum opportunity to get through. We need to give it the proper level of scrutiny to try and achieve that. 
but also I'm very cognisant of what is likely to happen with COVID-19, which is the number one priority as we go through. And bearing in mind in this process, I would put to the committee that we look for a what would be a suitable date in December. Wednesday. Wednesday, the first first Wednesday in December. And, and that's really only a date for this committee. And the committee is the committee, I think, is minded to do this as efficiently and as, 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 as ex possible. expeditiously Absolutely. as possible. It's not we're not delaying it. We just need to give ourselves as much scope as we can. So my recommendation would be sure that that would be the second of December. Uh, your thing is probably better than mine is. Yeah, the 2nd of December. So, uh, all those in favour of uh, delaying it to the 2nd of December, say aye. 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 Any against? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Member wish to have a formal motion on that? I wish to be recorded as dissenting. Mr Chair, there, there will have to be a, a formal motion then and a vote. Okay, I thought we just did that. So, All right. But and, uh, the, the motion, the motion, the motion is is we uh, delay this until the second of Wednesday, the second of December. All those in favour, say aye. Formally voted. Any against? Jim. Okay. Chair, we are nonetheless though today sending out the public notice. Yes. Yes. Yes, Chair. Uh, moving on to item agenda number eight, Chairman's business. There's no chairperson's business at this present. Moving to item number nine, correspondence. Uh, tabled at page 24 from the National Crime Agency. We are asking, since the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the initial, uh, committee's initial thoughts around the feasibility of the informal meeting on the 12th of May. Sorry, Terry, um, table of papers? Sorry? Where is that? Uh, tabled at page 24. Table, Sorry. Okay. I think we should send a holding reply to the National Crime Agency to say that we still wish to meet them and we would like to do it at the earliest possible convenience. But they're suggesting we could do it by link, aren't they? I would rather like to see their, what, their hmm? look at their eyes, Jim. We could do it by link, but then that will just be an excuse to be pushing it wherever it needs to be. Um, I would like to. I would like to meet them formally. All those in favour of us writing to us issuing a holding reply. All those in favour say aye. 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 Any against? Uh, next item was the absentee figures for uh, NICS staff since the beginning of VES until present, including a breakdown of staff absenteeism due to work-related stress. Page sixty. Page sixty-seven. Any comments? Well, VES means. Seems to have made it worse. Yeah. Is that a correct correlation to draw or not? From the looking of the paper, I think that is exactly what it says. But then if you reduce the members of staff and, and continue the level of workload, it's hardly surprising. <laughs> I'll move to the next, uh, if we're content to move on. Uh, move to page 70, uh, the public email from the Bus and Coach uh, Northern Ireland Limited regarding rates, which was forwarded to the Minister as a matter of urgency. Tabled at page, page 25 is his response from the Minister. Any comments? Uh, could I seek your agreement to forward to the Committee for the Economy for information? Agreed? Okay. Agreed. I ask members to. Uh, Do we then respond to the company or not? Um, can do, Chair, yeah. Yeah, we need yeah. to. Yeah. Back. Yeah. 
and we'll do that and we'll reference the we'll reference the letter we've received from uh, the Minister of Finance. And I'm sure is that to forward that letter to the yeah, as well? Yeah. There's no caveats on the top and bottom of it, so there should be no difficulties in forwarding it on. Uh, seek agreement from the members are content to note the remaining items of correspondence, including the information request to the department, outgoing correspondence and routine papers. Are we content? Content. Okay. Uh, looking now to the forward work programme, uh, the updated forward work programme at page 81. Uh, the committee had previously scheduled oral evidence from the department on the 22nd of April on both the Department of Finance budget and the voluntary exit scheme. I want, you to, I want to get your agreement to seek, uh, receive written evidence from the Department of both these matters and in relation to the budget to ask the Department to follow up with any responses to any questions the Committee may have within 24 hours of the 22nd of April meeting, which means that we reduce the opportunity of risk and people coming uh, to coming their way if we're content with that. So before we have the debate on, is it the 4th of May? We commence on the 4th of May. Yeah. The committee won't have had any order of evidence from the minister or anyone else, have they? Not at the moment. In the view of the circumstances, mm. I think in the view of the circumstances, I'm, you know, regrettably, but I am content with that. Mm -hmm. And bearing in mind, I think that circumstances will have changed considerably around the budget by then and there and I would imagine the Minister with the, the new dispensations being set up in the Assembly the Minister will be coming and making um, uh, will be giving um, statements to the Assembly as ch things change so I think we will have a, a degree of opportunity but as I say these are not normal circumstances are you expecting us to continue to meet weekly no, I am. Oh, yes. No, mm -hmm. I think we're. We'll probably at, at best we'll be meeting bi-weekly. So uh, are we meeting next week? Or? No, we're not planning to meet next week. Right, okay. And we're into the Easter recess. Easter recess. Yeah, into Easter, Easter recess. I mean, it's the precautionary principle, and I think it's agreed with the liaison's chairs. Is that look, there was a whole range of. I'll make this clear. There was a whole range of options on the table from um, uh, not having any committees at all which I think I made quite clear in some other committee chairs that that is not how we should be doing business. Uh, yeah. we should, we, we're exploring other options, everything from teleconferencing to video conferencing. Uh, if we have to hold physical meetings, and again, this is something that's under discussion, there's only two places we can do it if we have the full committee. can't be in committee rooms 29 or 30. It can only be in the Senate chamber or yeah. on the Assembly itself and how those are managed. So the best way to do that is to move to sort of a bi-weekly process, and we can look to do that. And Jim? Chair, sure, can, can I suggest that before moving substantially to the bi-weekly process, that firstly the committee is scheduled to meet the 22nd in relation to the department's budget, yep. and then the following week to consider responses from other departments and consider the higher level a executive budget in advance of the debate on we commence the 4th of May, so if members are content to schedule those two meetings. I think those both should be scheduled because I think the budget process is important regardless of what is going on with the COVID-19. If we are agreed, are we content? Yep. Good so, so have we a schedule of when we next meet, for example? 22nd, 22nd of April. That's the next meeting? Yes. On okay. 29th, sorry? On the 29th. 29th. So it's two in a row. Two in a row. but. Due to the straight after, yeah. straight after a recess. Yeah. And next week, and then it's recess for two weeks. Indeed. It's fair enough, Chair. Yeah. Uh, seek agreement from the clerk to write to the clerks of the other statutory committee suggests and they adopt a similar approach, reference the, the, the process. We're agreed. I seek agreement to schedule written evidence from the Public Spending Directory on the 29th of April when the final budget position is clear and to provisionally schedule oral evidence if it's needed should the current position improve before then. Agreed? Are we, uh, sorry, are we still going to get the speaking notes that we got today for items which were scheduled for oral evidence or not? Yes. Hmm. Yes, Chair, we can, it's up to the committee to, to agree to receive speaking notes yes. or, or yeah. similar yeah. briefing papers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, remind members that the Ulster University's Economic Policy Centre report, public and private sector pay, was issued to members earlier in this week. Has anybody had a chance to look at that in any detail? I must admit, I, I apologise, I skim read it, uh, but there is detail in it. Yeah, but obviously, it's something that will need some sun we need to look at. So, we'd like to seek agreement to include the report in the forward work programme as a substantial agenda item for a future meeting Agreed. further out. And uh, seek agreement for the planned and formal briefing by the Northern Ireland Assembly Communications Office on the t 1st of April to be deferred. I think we're content on that. And I advise members that there's no essential business plan for next week's meeting. And again, I would like your agreement to hold not to hold a committee meeting next week. All those great say aye. 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 I want to seek agreement that members are content with the forward work programme as we've changed it. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, draw members' attention to correspondence received regarding mortgage holidays for banking customers. Uh, this matter has now been closed because, resolved because when it came forward, the bank was out of step with what was going on, and that's now changed, and banks have now put out sort of new information. Uh, I want to draw members' attention to a clerk's briefing paper on the support available to business and personal banking customers tabled at page 28. Paul, do you want to make a comment on that? Oh, uh, 28, let me just get it up. Uh, yeah, I don't think, yeah. Yeah, this is the, the issue that we thought um, it was going to materialise. I was worried about trends. Uh, it seems to be the case that that has resolved itself. I think maybe the banks caught on yeah. what they needed to do in the scale of the problem. So, again, I see, uh, having looked through some of the other bank and talking to some of my contacts, it seems to be they're all stepping up their game with regards to what they need to yeah, do. Yeah, we've seen, with a notable exception of Danska, of which I will say I was declaring interest because I'm not very happy with them this week. Um, <laughs> But from the other banks, I've seen that they have stepped up significantly their game. Okay. Um, do we want to circulate that information to other MLAs, Paul, or are we quite happy that this is complete? It wouldn't be doing any harm to share the information. Yeah. No, I think I think there's so much information floating about at the minute, and I think everybody has to capture it and get it out to as many people. But that this may, there might be MLAs struggling with some of this stuff, and if they get that, then it, it sort of helps. Okay, we agreed. Great. And then time and place the next. Sorry, Chair, before, before you move on, uh, uh, I, I, I skipped a bit there. In relation to the functioning of government bill, if members are content to, to go back to that, there is a, li a list of uh, potential witnesses. Uh, I think we we'll wanted to do at this stage to see if, if members were content to uh, look through the list and see if there's anybody that members definitely want to call at this stage so that oral evidence sessions could oh, be well. scheduled. Well, maybe can we do that uh, out of committee if anybody wishes to send that information through to you, Jim? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. I mean, well, well, do we agree that uh, then at a later date, or is that something that has to be... But would, we be pages there, isn't it? would we be calling people before we see what they've written to us? Uh, yes, Chair, but it would be lining them up in advance, those, those uh, witnesses that the committee knows would be called anyway. However, they, they would be scheduled now, yeah. but wouldn't arrive until after the written So, like who, the Minister or the mm -hmm. Permanent Secretary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm, why not? Are there three, three pages, four pages mm -hmm. of people? I think a lot of those would be filtered by virtue of how they respond. Yeah. Maybe you want to add Sam McBride to that. <laughs> you just want the PR, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so do, do members want to schedule the Minister and the Permanent Secretary at this stage then? Well, well I think we should be. Here from some point, yeah. even want to schedule the head of the Northern Ireland Civil Service before yeah. he departs. He took the words straight out of my mouth. Yeah, I would uh, be particularly keen to talk to the head of the Northern Ireland Civil Service before he walks out the door. Yeah. And anybody that would be acting, or are about to act, I suppose. <laughs> Plenty of those. <laughs> Any other comments, Tim? Um, just before I sort of uh, adjourn the meeting, uh, Please be safe out there. Uh, it's 
Sorry. Sorry. I, can I raise something? I, I think that it would be very important for this committee uh, to try and get some sort of sight on actually what's happening out there in the civil service with regards to safe operating, um, safe distancing. I'm getting all sorts of reports from private sector, but also on public sector workspace too. Uh, on a number of issues, first of all, safe practicing, safe distance practicing. Some areas it's not happening. Uh, sometimes the environment will, won't lend it to itself happening, but then something else has to happen, like people then must be moved away. Uh, there seems to be an issue with who is actually uh, vulnerable, and if they go home, how are they protect it, how are they paid, what sort of pay are they on. Uh, I had one issue whereby um, a member of the civil service, due to her weight, is vulnerable, and the, her, her line managers disputed the fact that she was vulnerable, uh, and she spent three days trying to argue the case, and then ended up having to take some sort of leave that was protected, and they could, had come up with it. Now, if people are fighting those battles, then they're not able to protect themselves properly. And I think that's very, very poor. I know that this is fast moving, and I know that things are happening by the hour, uh, but I do think line managers right down throughout the civil service needs to get direction. This lady that I was talking to specifically asked me to mention that they have nothing against their line managers, but they thought that their line manager wasn't getting the support either to make decisions. Uh, I think the way the assembly has moved, the, the way the assembly has moved, has been very, very good, very, very quick, lightning speed, uh, precautionary measures set in place. I would like to see that echoed right across the civil service, and it should be. Uh, so I'm worried. We all know the the, uh, the horror stories with regards to the private sector and food processing and other factories and one thing and another. We need to make sure the civil service sets an exemplar here, uh, and I'm not sure that's happening everywhere. And I think we need to write to somebody just to make sure and ensure and apply pressure that we're watching, or we're trying to get insight in any, at the very least into what's taking. Paul, could you make a formal proposal? I would imagine you were saying we would probably want to write a letter to uh, the perm sec, yep. as they, as particularly, and I think in relation to uh, dealing with health and safety of the staff, uh, vulnerability of the staff, and uh, areas where they weren't following appropriate guidance. And if that was the proposal you would like yeah, to put, I, I'll put it to the committee. I would add that to that, just if there's any procedures or process currently in place to identify vulnerable workers and who then can go home. Uh, I know that some people won't be able to go home because of their work practices. Some people will easily go home and work. But then what happens then if the environment isn't big enough for safe distance practicing, mm -hmm. and if some person is vulnerable, how do they get home? And what are they on salary sick pay? Are they on unpaid leave? You know, I, are they for road? I I don't know with regards to civil service. And so like a particular dimension, there's the agency workers and the agency workers, of mm -hmm. course. Not so to that, the agency yeah. workers. Um, so I, I think we need to get a panoramic view right across the civil service here because this probably will last for months. Mm -hmm. uh, so they need to get on the ground quickly and get this sorted out for people, to give people peace of mind. And there's another aspect of this too. So the civil service worker may not be vulnerable, but their, but their husband might be. and yeah. wife is. And again, what's the procedure around that at this present time? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want to disable any unit of civil service. We need to keep things going. So they need to have a procedure in place to, to make sure that that's done in a robust way that protects the workforce but also protects the work plan. So that's a question of reassurance. So if there's a formal proposal from the Deputy Chair that I fully support that we write to the Perm Secretary along those lines. All those in favour say aye. 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 Richard, do you want uh, to include Chair in that? Second. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Chair. So we're all have been dealing with those sort of in incidents, both in the private and public. But the message coming from the First and Deputy First Minister has been very straight. 
If yeah. you can't practice social distancing. You shouldn't be there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, team, thank you very much indeed. I'm yeah. serious about this. Be safe out there. And, uh, safe to everybody. But uh, let's keep going. And thank you very much indeed for making the effort coming yeah. in today. Thank you, Clark. Thank, thank you, team. Thank you. time of next meeting? Uh, date and time of next meeting, 2 o'clock, 22nd of April. In the Senate? It's in the Senate, yeah. yeah. Okay. 29.